In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a Navisqus model uh, that will show you the changes that a user has done to accomplish a specific task. Um, as you can see here uh, in the items that are green or the items that were changed, uh, either created or modified by a specific user, uh, all the gray items are the stuff that was unchanged. Uh, so in this uh, change for this user, they actually were creating a bilge and ballast system. Uh, also, what you can uh, do uh, with uh, this Navisworks model uh, with uh, using functionality within Navisworks is to even use clash detection uh, for the case where you want to um, see the interferences or the clashes that the user's changes has with the rest of the model. So it'll ignore all the other um, interferences except the ones that the users has modified and with the current model. Um, so here's just an example and it, it just uh, shows you all the the changes or all the clashes and you can kind of go through it and and modify it. And these are all linked to the ship constructor project so you can use a switch pack command and do uh, the penetrations. So let's get started. So let's close this uh, Navisworks model. So the first thing that you have to do is uh, set up your project so that the enterprise platform can generate the proper uh, Navisworks model as well as files that are linked to Navisworks to know what items have changed. Uh, the very first thing is to locate your project. Um, you do that by uh, finding where the PRO file is. And then in my blog, there is a zip file that uh, when uncompressed will look similar to this. Uh, so you'll have to take this enterprise platform folder and simply copy and paste it to your um, project folder. Again, the same location that has the PRO file. In essence, all it has is a template, uh, an Excel template, which links to Navisworks using data tools, which we'll do in a later step. Uh, and it will get populated by enterprise platform on the items that have changed. Uh, the second is that you'll need a another operation. So I included a uh, operations XML here that has one additional operation. If uh, you haven't modified your operation file located in your C users, your username, app data, roaming, SSI, and enterprise platform 2017, um, if you haven't modified them by using um, uh, my any other my uh, blog posts or any other operations that you created, you can simply drag and paste this one into here. Uh, if you have modified it, you would have to follow the blog post and just uh, copy the one operation uh, into this XML file. So that's uh, your setup. That's pretty much a one-time setup. So after this, what you have to do is just now use Ship Constructor uh, and make your changes being associated to a task. So I'm not sure how many are you familiar with uh, using tasks, but if you go to uh, the Advantage Pack uh, tab and then go to the panel that which says Tasks and you go to Manage Tasks, this will give you all the tasks that are actually created for your project. Um, so here I just have some preliminary ones already created, but for this use case I'll create a new one. So if you create a new task, um, use a name, that makes sense for your task name. You want to assign it to a user. I'm going to assign it to a ship constructor because that's the user that I'm logged into at the, currently. And then also I am going to click apply, click OK. And now I have to assign myself to that task or to make it my current task. So if you go to select your current tasks, it limits the tasks that you have. Um, associated to your name. So as you see, it doesn't have the Dennis um, one that was assigned just to Dennis because I'm logged in as ship constructor. And I select that one. And now that will be my current task. As you can kind of see in here, it's uh, uh, bolded. So now any changes that I make in ship constructor will be associated to that task. And that's in essence when I generate uh, through publisher, uh, any items that are associated to that task will be the items that will be highlighted, as I mentioned there. So I can actually start creating ship constructor parts, uh, but I am pretty lazy and my modeling skills are not that great. Uh, so I'm just going to use uh, mo uh, WorkShare model import to import a system that I exported previously. So 
Uh, so we'll do model, oops, model import, select my workshare model, and then import it. So my model is imported. So now I just want to save my changes because these changes on uh, workshare model don't get saved to the database until I save. So everything's saved. So you can kind of see that uh, if you go back to the, uh, the Vantage Pack and tasks, and if you click on here and go show changes, it lists all the parts that have actually have changed and these are all the ones that I've just inserted. So let's close all this and now we open up uh, Enterprise Platform. Connect to your project and now we want to load the items um, from the tasks that we've changed. So if we go to Load Manager, we go to Task Items, we go to Specific, and then we select the task that we want to see the changes in. Click OK. And then we'll select the parts, select the operation, and then go all the way to the bottom. So when we copy the operations XML file, this is the operation that we copied over. So we click OK. So this will create a file that we will link in Navisworks to identify which items have actually changed. Uh, but we still want to create a Navisworks model. If you already have a Navisworks model, you don't need to do anything different. Uh, but in this case, I want to also create a Navisworks model at the same time. So if we go to uh, load drawings, I go to specific, I want to only load uh, the model drawings. Uh, so select all these, and since I'm working in Unit 2, I'm only going to select uh, Unit 2 model drawings, just to keep it uh, smaller. Again, I can select as many drawings as I want. If I need the entire project, I can, um, but I don't have to. Then you select drawings over here, and you go to select, and then there's an operation that generates uh, NWF from the files. So you click on that. Uh, one other thing you want to make sure is to determine your output directory. So if you want to change your output directory, you can. Um, I usually just uh, have it under um, publish files underneath my project. Um, but you can select it wherever you want. Uh, a key thing that you will want to do for this one, just so that you don't have to uh, update it very often, um, the data tools in Navisworks, is to turn this creation date off. So um, a lot of times you want it on just to, so it breaks down the folders nicely, but in this case you want it to replace. So every time you're uh, making a new um, change file here, it will actually overwrite. So when you've done all this, it's pretty much set up, and you just click on Run. So it's completed the Excel file. Now it's just creating the drawings right now, or creating the Navisworks model. So it looks like it's all completed now. So when this changes to close, so if you click close, and then if you want to get to the output, you can click on this folder. So this is the output uh, that gets created, these two files, and it'll be in whatever location in your output that you've selected. So you can see it, it's like they created a NWF file, which is just a reference of my Navisworks model that I want, want to use, and also an Excel file, which uh, is what we'll be linking with their data tools uh, shortly. Um, so if you go and you open up uh, Navisworks, uh, So this is the model that we've created. Uh, right now you have no way of knowing what has changed. So we now have to link, uh, link the, uh, the file that we generated, the Excel, uh, Excel file. So if you go to Data Tools and you go to Import, and then in my uh, package file, uh, there is a um, 
data tools XML file. So you just click on that and import. And then you want to go to this and edit. So this is a, only a one-time setup. You won't have to do this uh, once you do it the first time. Click on edit. Uh, pretty much the SQL string is already set up. Uh, all you do is have to point to your uh, Excel file that you create through uh, the enterprise platform. And that was the one that's located um, in the output that you were um, in in this one here that was being generated by the two files. So wherever you've located your output folder, you'll want to select that file. Uh, after you click Setup and select Workbook, and you'll want to select that file. So once that's set up, you're pretty much uh, ready to go. You'll want to check this and click OK. So after you've done this, the best way, what I usually recommend is to create an NWD file. And this will allow anyone that has just even freedom uh, to access this uh, model without it requiring uh, access to the, that Excel file that you've created or ship constructor or any of those properties. So if you go to output and you go to NWD, uh, make sure that embedded database properties is checked uh, so that it will uh, capture all the uh, properties that we've included in the Excel file to identify which ones have been modified. Uh, also, I changed this maybe resave so you can resave the NWD. Click OK, and then you can output uh, the file to wherever you want. So we go uh, waveform output. So we've created the NWD file. So let's uh, load it in here. So as you can see, if you start clicking these properties, you'll see a different tab on the items that have changed. But if you open up your selection tree uh, and then go to properties, there is this waveform task part NW, which is Navisworks modification. If you select that, it'll select all the parts that have been modified. Uh, so what I usually do is I usually select the, everything. I override the color to some gray color. I do uh, the transparency slightly just so it's a little more transparent. And then you can select this and reset uh, the entire visibility on that. So that now you start getting uh, a better picture of what actually has changed. And then again, you can do the clash detection. So hopefully that was uh, useful. Thank you very much.